Florida Bay, with its patchwork of mangrove islands and large tracts of shallow water, provides ideal habitat for fish-eating birds. Gathering in large groups during the nesting season, they form what are known as colonies. These high concentrations of birds attracted plume hunters in the late 1800s and their populations plummeted against the rising demand of the millinery trade. Highly desirable for its colorful feathers, the roseate spoonbill was virtually extirpated from the United States, and in the early 1900s there were no known nesting colonies remaining in Florida Bay. Fortunately, in 1935 a small breeding colony was discovered, and in 1939 the National Audubon Society began monitoring the population. With the end of the plume trade and the establishment of Everglades National Park, things were looking up for the spoonbill. However, the ensuing development of South Florida provided a new set of challenges for all wading birds. The historic watershed that fueled Florida Bay was greatly altered and fragmented as the Everglades were drained to make way for agriculture and development. Using the information collected from decades of avian monitoring programs, scientists began drawing connections between the health of the southern Everglades and wading birds. Specifically, the roseate spoonbill proves a great indicator species for the overall health of the ecosystem. Members of the biological research community often refer to it as the pink canary in the coal mine. Like wood storks and ibis, spoonbills are tactile feeders. They comb the water with their beaks, which they close with lightning speed upon feeling a small fish or crustacean. This feeding method requires a high density of prey within a small area in order to maximize food intake with minimal effort. Everglades water levels shift seasonally, rising with summer rains and falling with the winter dry season. Spoonbills instinctively time their nesting with the dry season in order to take advantage of the high concentrations of prey, which are forced into shallow pools. With the high energetic demands of their rapidly growing young, spoonbills require constant access to optimal feeding grounds. However, Canals and levees north of Florida Bay inhibit the natural water flow into the southern Everglades and disrupt the seasonal drawdown cycle. These man-made waterways also divert fresh water away from the natural sloughs, changing the balance of fresh and salt water required to create a productive estuary. Spoonbills lay an average clutch of three eggs, but if the adults are unable to provide ample food for their young, many chicks will not survive. Over the last 30 years, Audubon scientists have observed a steady decline of spoonbill nesting success. Similar nesting declines are evident in other fish-eating birds including pelicans, osprey, and bald eagles, indicating an overall degradation of conditions in Florida Bay. This presents a more profound problem for residents of the Florida Keys in southern Florida. The local economy would be devastated should Florida Bay cease to support the game fish and bird populations it's become world famous for. Still, Audubon continues its monitoring programs for these iconic pink birds to determine how to revive their populations and in turn restore the health of Florida Bay. Throughout the southern Everglades, nesting colonies are carefully observed and chick survival rates are documented. When the nestlings are of proper age, they are equipped with two distinct leg bands containing specific codes. If the bird is observed once it is grown, the band numbers will indicate where the bird was hatched. This allows scientists to track the bird's movements and determine whether or not spoonbills continue to return to Florida Bay, or if they relocate to other nesting grounds. The future is uncertain for the spoonbill in Florida Bay. Restoration of the Everglades should provide the opportunity for spoonbills and other birds to once again nest in great numbers. As we witnessed 80 years ago at the end of the plume trade, the fate of these birds is in our hands. We have the power and the tools to give them another chance. If the spoonbill fails, then we will have failed one of the most biodiverse and ecologically important wetlands in North America.
Time is as critical now as ever before because in this ecosystem, every spoonbill counts.